every time. Drafting the cape body is pretty straightforward, um, especially for little ones because they just need a three-quarter circle and uh, just, yeah, little kid capes just need to be able to be taken off quickly, both for safety and for the ease of parents because parents have enough to deal with without having to fiddle with clasps. Because of quarantine, I haven't spent a lot of time with her recently, but uh, from her parents' reports, uh, she seems to have this really cool combination of like girly, fun, Disney princess, you know, uh, kind of glamour to her, but also is really into the adventure stories and like The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and these fantasy stories that are very much more about like adventuring and going out and playing. She likes Pokemon. She's, she's being raised by two nerds. She's gonna be a nerd, but she's just such a cool kid. And so I really want to design something for her that will appeal to her wanting to be, you know, Anna from Frozen, but also appeal to that like fantasy adventurer aspect. And so the cape part is pretty straightforward when it comes to things like that. It just has to be a circle cloak, not a big deal. But the hood is where I think we're going to have to work on a little bit the style of things and how it'll look. So I'm actually going to draft four or five mini uh, hood patterns and hoods are pretty straightforward it's just a it's just a doubled over piece of fabric that's cut on a fold and then the shape that it falls into though is really interesting because you're playing with drape and you're playing with how the you're paying you're playing with how the shape will be affected by gravity if you've got a pattern where you've got this big long point coming out the back of your head well obviously it doesn't stay pointing out when you've Put it on so it'll sink down so that's where you get those like medieval pipe kind of looks to hoods and the broader you make a hood the wider it will be and so how much it drapes on the shoulders gets that really cool like loop look that you see in some of the fantasy movies like the uh like the elves uh in lord of the rings that kind of cloak is very much what they've got going on but then maybe you want something a little bit more practical that sits a little bit higher um, especially for our Canadian winters, we might want something that's a little bit more close to the face so that uh, when the little gremlin is outside she can stay nice and cozy warm. But I also want the parents to be able to see her <laughs> at all times and uh, so that's something to keep in mind. So, so I'm balancing some elements and I'll, uh, I'll see how I go and how it works. But what I'm going to be doing with drafting these different patterns is I'm going to be making little mini versions. So only a couple inches high and then I'll arrange them somewhere so that they can be seen and photographed and then I'll send those photographs over to the parents who can either show them to Little Gremlin or who can uh, decide for her this is such a fun project to kind of get back into design and get back into uh, using my sewing machine because the last couple of months have been pretty occupied with the 18th century gown and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that I wasn't doing a lot of designing. It was a lot of following patterns and if I wasn't following a pattern, I was following a, a, a style and a, a look that was very much I don't want to say set in stone, but very like I was I was following guidelines, you know, there was a there was a sort of style brief, if you will. Whereas this is a fantasy cloak. I can make it up as I go along. Uh, but anyways, so I'm uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this. This is gonna be a really cool, cool project, and I think it's a cool thing to start off this start off this morning with. We will be moving probably later in the day to other more historical projects because I do have a deadline for a costume for the end of the month. And so I have to get that done. That's a surprise. I'm not telling you what it is yet. I think this is a nice little palette cleanser for me, uh, getting back into the funk of sewing with a sewing machine and creating my own designs. It's, uh, it, it's a lot of fun so far. So we'll see how that goes. But in the meantime, it's 11 o'clock. It's time to take the dog for a walk, have some tea, and we'll get back to it. And I'll probably check in once I have my uh, hood designs. So I'll see you in a bit. These are the, <laughs> these are the uh, 
these are the hoods. So uh, this one is the one that's sort of more medieval inspired. Uh, you can see that long bit of tail there is what makes it do that funk, that funky thing there. So yeah, this one is the definitely like the most medieval of the ones that we're doing. So it's still got that wide front opening, but the back goes out a really long way and then tapers to this really narrow point to give it that cute little tail thing. There's a real word for it, but unfortunately I am not remembering it right now because I'm not a medieval person normally. Um, this one is one that tends to be, I think, the most popular for sort of fantasy uh, costumes and things like that, and the, the length of that top edge really affects how much this bit kind of falls down. The uh, Obviously the weight and the look of these are a little bit wonky because I'm using just a tiny bit of fabric and the fabric tension stays up because it's, uh, it's in miniature. If this was to scale, this tail would be probably falling down a lot more, but regardless, that's kind of the look and the shape. This one here is a little bit more what you would see on a contemporary hoodie. It has the rounded back. Um, this is something that is not terribly common with, uh, with fantasy or costumes. It tends to be a little bit more popular with contemporary clothing. And then this one is your really boilerplate basic hood. It's just a rectangle, so that top edge gets a little bit pointy. I don't love this look just because I feel like it's, I don't know, it feels a little silly to me, but I don't know, maybe it looks different when it's done by somebody who's actually doing it well and not putting it on a mini hand sanitizer bottle. So I might be wrong, who knows? I'm gonna do a little bit of shots of these, some photos to send to uh, the little gremlin parents, and we'll, uh, we'll see what they think, and I'll come back with the results. Probably not today. This is probably as far as I'm gonna get with this costume today, but uh, I think this is pretty cute. These little candles with hoods, this is fun. And uh, so yeah, this is, these were by, sewn by machine, by the way, because even though I could probably sew them by hand really quickly, uh, I'm trying to do this even quicker, so it was really funny then <laughs> busting out my sewing machine for like a half inch of stitching. It was, it was a good time. Uh, so anyways, closing it down and we'll check in later with other things that I'm working on. Okay, uh, 
last task of the day is I'm finally going to figure out how to use the buttonhole function on my sewing machine. <laughs> This is the thing that I last tried to do when I did my uh, one day yesterday's pajama make. So it's probably not the best time to try and figure out uh, a complicated sewing function on a slightly vintage machine. Uh, I actually got some help with this recently, did a little bit of searching on the internet, did a little bit of calling around for friends, and I figured it out. So hopefully we can now do it well on an actual garment. We'll see. Wish me luck. I'll see you soon. Grundle at the top mark. Done. Oh. Alright, see, this is why I normally do a voiceover so you don't have to hear my horrendous foul mouth. Crap. Okay. Let's give this another try. Why does this keep happening? What's going on? <laughs> I did it! I did it! Yes! <laughs>